Oh, and just one more caveat, guys. We are going to be recording this um, this uh, the presentation today because we're doing some experimentation. So I just want to let everybody know. Yeah, this is our first time doing this digitally. So we'll see how it goes. So if you aren't really comfortable doing recorded, if you want to turn off your visual, just an FYI. Yeah, yeah. All right. Put that there. Um, hey, Kat, as a backup, yeah. in case we can't get it to go live on Facebook, can you start just recording in Zoom and then we can always just post it as a video? Yeah, I'm, I've reco I'm recording it to, and I've already hit record, um, to the cloud. Perfect. Okay. And then we can just push it forward so that we're good. Okay. Now, the uh, only other thing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and mute all and uh, we're going to let Twill take it away. Twill, you're still, okay, there you go. And everybody see the screen I'm sharing right now? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so, welcome to the SCA. I don't want to go. We'll just start. Welcome to the SCA, everybody. Uh, so, um, we don't have the Baron and Baroness present currently, um, but if they or Robert show up at some point, we'll make sure to introduce them to you. Uh, but to start off, let's just introduce the members of our Newcomers Academy. Um, Uh, I'm Twahal. Uh, you can call me Twill. Um, we also have Mickey Mouse roll call, y'all. Uh, Kat, you're up first. Say hi, Kat. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, my name is Catherine Cropser. I am the chairwoman of the newcomer, Brangula Newcomers Academy. And since he's here, I'm also going to have him introduce himself just, just really quickly. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm Robert, Sir Robert Debray, Seneschal of uh, the Great Barony of Brangula. All right, and next up we have Ratio. Say hi, Ratio. Hey, everybody. My name is Ratio de Sisi. Uh, mundanely, I'm known as Ricky Fink, so that's what's going to come up if you're looking me up on Facebook or something like that. And I am the hospitler for the Barony Bringualad, which is basically the newcomer's officer. And then clearly the coolest one among, um, one among us, we have Genevieve next because you're the next picture I see. Hi, Genevieve. Hi everyone, my name is Genevieve of Hell's Gate. Um, I am currently the deputy hospitaller as well as the head of the Scribal Guild, so. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I don't see your video. Ah, there you are. Uh, we have Nadia Ramthener. Say hi, Nadia. Nadia, your microphone's not on. Sorry, I thought I was doing the temporary unmute. Um, I'm Nadia Ramthener. I'm a deputy rapier marshal for the barony, so I help run the rapier practice. Um, and I am helping run the Newcomers Academy. I don't have so many jobs as other people. All right, thank you all for introducing yourselves real quick. Uh, so as we go tonight, um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please put them in the chat. Uh, Nadia will be moderating that chat throughout the evening. She'll be taking down the questions that get asked and we'll readdress them at the end. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a survey that I'll be putting up. I'm going to put it up actually after the class tonight um, on the Baronial page. That way, any newcomers who want to can uh, go fill out the survey. Uh, so make sure to do that sometime in the next week or so. I'm going to leave a pretty long time for people to, to sign in on it. Um, also, if you'd like to introduce yourself, if you're one of our, our newcomers, um, or, or old comers taking the class again, uh, please, here's a, here's a few moments, uh, say hi. Hi, I'm Jamie. I am a friend of Gavin and, uh, oh, what the hell's her name? Wintiliana. And uh, I just joined officially the SCA, but I've been SCA adjacent for a few decades. Is there a pecking order? No, no pecking order. Just feel free to chime in. Okay. My name is Rob Brown, um, and my SCA name is Robert Lacry de Puyac. Um, 
So I joined recently. I've been a, uh, I've shadowed you guys for probably 20 years. Uh, and uh, I'm retired, so I've got more free time to, uh, to devote to such things. Um, I'm Melissa. I, uh, I'm a final year costume design undergrad at UT. I'm a returning adult student. Uh, and um, I decided to get involved because I'm actually making um, costumes that fit in the time period the ESA covers now. Awesome. Uh, my name's Terry. My SCA name is, is uh, Violet Star. And I live in shirts, so, but I work in and around Austin a lot, um, doing film work. <laughs> uh, so I joined after somebody in California actually told me about it when I was visiting them. And uh, it was, you mean I get to fight and dress up? I was in. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and go if that's okay. Sure. <laughs> um, my name's John Hidalgo. In the SCA, I'm Jonathan Blacklock. Um, I actually um, was involved, not too deeply, but involved back in the uh, late 90s here in, in Bringualad um, and had a big hiatus and came back in about the last year or so. Uh, looking to do stuff with train bands and pikes and muskets and fun stuff like that. So, um, and I, uh, like Violet, uh, I do uh, filmmaking as well. Um, my next project is going to be a parody fan film called Batman versus Supergirl, where uh, Bruce Wayne plays poker with Clark Kent, loses, and now he's got a Baby said a uh, eight year old supergirl who's like Mindy from Animaniacs. So there you go. Oh, I, I, I'm big on feast gear. If you if you need feast gear or need advice on feast gear, I can definitely help you out. All right. Anybody else? Once, twice. Me. Go Maybe. for it. Hi, um, I'm Catalina Ana de Salamanca. I've been underfoot for a little while, and um, I have a lot of different interests in the SCA. I've been a heavy fighter, I've been a rapier fighter, I've been an archer. Um, I don't do equestrian because horses bite me in the toes. Um, I've done a lot of costuming, I do a lot of fiber arts, that kind of thing. Um, mostly what I do though is I introduce people to stuff or other people. So if you have an interest in something and you want to know who's doing it right now in the kingdom, I might be able to help you out with that. Thank you. All right. Um, if other people would like to introduce themselves, I'll come back around to that later on. Uh, but let's get moving for now. Um, do we have Robert to do a welcome to the SCA, cat, or are you going to do that? We have a, we have a Robert. Awesome. Hello everybody. Um, it's really nice to see so many new people and some others that have come to our classes in the past but may have missed this one. I'm just going to give a very, very brief overview of the SCA's structure. Um, there are basically two pillars of the SCA um, to, to manage this organization. And this organization is an international organization, so it, it, there are groups all over the world. And uh, we're really fortunate in that uh, 1965, we had a group of people put together an awesome party, and from that it's bloomed this amazing organization. So uh, this year, I think we're 55 years old. We just celebrated our birthday on May uh, 1st. So that was pretty awesome. Um, so the SCA was established in California as a result of that uh, party, um, and we're now a 501c3 organization. So we have on one side, we have the, the uh, I guess the business pillar, you can call it that, which is the structure of maintaining the uh, 501c3's responsibilities as an organization to meet uh, legal and financial obligations. And that structure is very well defined in that um, you have a, just in general, a, a principle 
officer for each group or for each organization. And under that, you have other officers who are responsible for uh, activities within the organization, uh, either on you know society-wide le uh, level, kingdom level, or in our case, baronial level. So for my job as Seneschal, uh, I am considered the business manager of the local group. Um, and there's a Seneschal that's above, that's a regional Seneschal who is uh, responsible for making sure that the regions are operating in a cohesive and legal um, manner. And then above him is a kingdom Seneschal who is responsible for the organization on a, for Texas and Oklahoma. So you, they'll talk about this a little bit later on. But um, overseeing and overarching all of this organization is, we often refer to them as the BOD, but it's the Board of Directors. Um, and they oversee every uh, corporate compliance aspect, uh, then make sure that we are uh, responding or in compliance with IRS, state and federal statute when it comes to 501c3 organizations. Uh, on the other side, the other pillar <clears throat> that we have that allows us to recreate the medieval aspect of what the SCA is, is what I call the feudal side. And that's where you have a king and queen, prince and princess, most of the time now. <laughs> uh, you have baron and baronesses, which are the fig uh, figureheads and the representatives of the crown for bro a baronial organizations like ours here in Bringalad. Um, and then under that, you have all the award systems and that fall under that as well. I'm not going to get into that at all. Um, so local offices, uh, are they administrate, administer the day-to-day -day business of the local chapter. They, again, ensure compliance with corporate and kingdom law. Uh, so in our barony, we have a seneschal. We have an exchequer, which is the person who's responsible for the uh, the money, basically, a treasurer. Uh, we have a Knights Marshal who's responsible for the overseeing the uh, fighting concepts on the heavy side. And then we have a Rapier Marshal who's responsible for overseeing the, uh, the uh, safe operation of the Rapier combat. We have an Arts and Science Minister who's responsible for uh, engendering the arts and sciences within the organization. Uh, then we have Web minister who's responsible for maintaining and updating our, our website. We have a social media deputy now who's also responsible for making sure that uh, we are complying with Facebook, Facebook uh, social media policy, kingdom social media policy, and making sure that uh, we're utilizing those um, platforms to the best ability to get the message out, out about the SCA. Some of you guys may have found us through Meetup, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all of these platforms are social media platforms that we're using currently, and the social media deputy is responsible for all those. Uh, so that kind of sums up most of the local offices. Um, each group is different. Uh, so baronies are usually larger groups with larger, within larger cities, such as Austin. For example, in Onstior, which is uh, Texas and Oklahoma. I know people are gonna go into depth a little bit more of that. But baronies are really large as far as uh, like Austin is big is a big city, so we're a barony. So I'll turn that back over to uh, Catherine and let her um, open up the next segment. Or Arazio. I mean, sorry, twelve. <laughs> You're the, I keep forgetting who's in charge of this today. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> I'm back. Um, so you can pull this back up. Uh, so in the SCA, we have a lot of different things uh, that you can do. So uh, for all of those, uh, let's see. Actually, before we get into that, um, at, let's uh, bring in Orazio next. Uh, Orazio, can you tell us a little about, bit about the history of the SCA, where it started? So yeah, I would love to. So the, you know, Robert just outlined a lot of how the SCA uh, is structured and it's kind of like, wow, there's a lot there. How did that happen? Um, so this all began back in actually 1966. Uh, so this is still our 55th, but it's kind of, you know, way numbers work. Um, but in 1966, a group of students uh, at UC Berkeley uh, out in California got together to hold a grand tournament uh, as a protest against the modern era. And so they got together in the backyard of uh, author Diana Paxson actually, um, and, you know, we're using 
plywood swords and had pieces of carpet over their chest as armor and were wearing old Freon cans as helmets and had a grand tournament, had a big feast that they cooked together and decided this was a lot of fun, we should do it again. And that was the very start of the SEA. Um, they continued to do that and then three of those individuals who'd been at UC Berkeley moved out to New York. And so suddenly they needed a kingdom of the West and a kingdom of the East. And so the first two kingdoms of the SCA were born. Um, the way that uh, the kingdom of Anseora, the Texas and Oklahoma kingdom started is, you know, the, the kingdom in the West and East basically split it down the middle and then sort of more kingdoms started popping up as they were needed. And we were birthed off of the kingdom of Aitenvelt, um, which used to be basically most of the western part of the United States except for the actual west coast. Um, and so then we were birthed off of uh, the kingdom of Aitenvelt. We became a principality, which is sort of a subgroup of Aitenvelt in 1977 and then became a kingdom in our own right in 1979. Um, and so you can kind of see, you know, looking at some of these pictures, uh, especially that one at the bottom with the fighters, kind of we started pretty uh, simple with our stuff. And now you'll see some of the pictures coming later on where we've really advanced. And it's not so much that it's all about making sure that we're as, as precise as possible, but it's just the opportunities that we've had to learn and study and enjoy each other's company has gotten to a point where we uh, understand all this a lot better um, and are able to reproduce things uh, to a much greater degree. Um, and so just a last little bit, uh, the Barony of Bringualad itself actually started as um, the Shire of, of Piscumbre. And then uh, that was, that name was kicked back. And then uh, the Barony of Bringualad, um, which in Welsh kind of sort of means hill country. It's, we weren't as, we weren't as good at Welsh then as we, as we would have hoped. It's actually the country called hill is, is what our, our name means. Um, but so we were set up uh, the same year that the SCA, uh, or the same year that Anstiora became a kingdom in 1979. So we just celebrated our 50th uh, this last year as well. Are, are there enrollments that drive the, the sizes of baronies and kingdoms and such? Yes, and I believe that Catherine's actually, or, or Catherine's going to get into that when she talks about sort of the SCA geography and our, our groups. So, Jordan? Oh, 12, um, thanks, Horatio. Uh, so, you know, if you, you get tired of funny history humor, like, oh, well, we misnamed Bringlewad because it was actually not Hill Country, but the country called Hills. Well, there's going to be a lot of that in this society. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, moving on, though. So we've got a lot of different things to do within the SCA. Um, there are a nearly infinite number of possible activities within our organization when you consider the fact that we have this gigantic branch of things we call arts and sciences. Uh, they span everywhere from pottery making to clothes to researching the specific practices of phlebotomy in medieval in the medieval Middle East. I mean, if you can think of something that was done before the 1600s, somebody somewhere in this society is probably doing something about it. Um, they're, they're researching it, they're recreating it, and uh, there are plenty of people that can talk your ear off about it. But we're going to try to narrow that down for y'all a little bit tonight to just a few different activities. Uh, so first we have our martial art activities. Um, and by martial art, we mean, what we mean is they're combat focused. Uh, so we have things like rapier. I'm our local rapier marshal. Um, if you see up in the upper right hand corner of the slide here, um, you see two of our rapier fighters. Uh, it looks like they're actually doing a type of combat called cut and thrust. Um, but uh, we have a lot of people that are going to be using steel weaponry like that. It's all blunted. It's all tipped. We're all wearing armor so that if something failed or broke, we wouldn't get injured. Um, 
And that steel weaponry is how we practice rapier combat. Um, alongside rapier combat, we have our chivalric or heavy combat. Uh, this is people in, in heavy armor. We think knights in shining armor in their chain mail or their plate or their leather, and they go into combat with an axe or a broadsword or a mace. That's that kind of combat. Uh, they hit hard and they have big shields and big sticks with which to bash each other. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's very high energy, high activity. Um, then we have um, our equestrian uh, arts. So uh, in the bottom left there, uh, you'll see one of our, our riders um, and they're doing a, a type of, they're doing quintain, um, which you will be able to learn about in the SCA. Um, I myself do not do equestrian, so I would not be suited to tell you a whole lot about this activity. Um, but there are a lot of fun games and activities that they, you can do if you have access to, or if you know someone who has access to, or you make friends with someone who has access to a horse. Um, we also have archery, thrown weapons, and siege weaponry. Um, there are large scale combats that we do within the society at things we call wars. Um, and we will have full combat with archers, with blunt arrows that you can shoot other people with and get shot by, and it is a good deal of fun. Um, and we actually have a really big thriving archery practice here in the Barony of Bringelon. Uh, so if you're interested in that, of course, we can easily direct you in that direction. Uh, with regard to siege weaponry, we have people that make small scale siege weapons like ballistas, trebuchets, catapults, and we also use those in battles. Um, for arts and sciences, uh, we have a lot of guilds in the barony. Um, and just right now, if I have any guild leaders, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk dance first. But after that, if we have a guild leader, please speak up and give us a little blurb about the guild. Um, I'm the head of the dance guild. Uh, we teach and practice medieval and renaissance dance. Um, we can, if you don't know it, it doesn't matter. Come out to a dance practice. We'll teach you how to do it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and as you get better at it, we can even teach you how to research it and recreate it yourself. Uh, anyone else? Guild leaders? Yes, I am the guild leader for the Scribal Guild. Um, basically, if you've ever seen any sort of illuminated manuscript, uh, that is what we're trying to recreate. Um, one of our main focuses is that we do give out awards within our group. And uh, you, you want a nice painted award. So uh, that's basically what we focus on. And when we have guild stuff up and running again, of course, after this pandemic, all you need to do is show up with yourself and we can get you started. Other guild leaders? John, you want to talk about cooking? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, I run the newly formed or reformed or however you want to call it, Cooks Guild. We've so far only had one meeting and then uh, we were planning on another one and then coronavirus uh, threw water on our plans. But right now the idea is uh, hopefully at some point we'll get together and share food that we make and we'll share recipes and um, you know, I'm not the greatest cook in the world, but uh, Hopefully there'll be opportunities for me to learn from other people and other people to learn from other members of the group. So uh, that's uh, the cook skilled in a nutshell. Um, as I said before, I'm also uh, starting to put together a train band that's also very much in its infancy, um, which is doing the uh, kind of the local military or local militias um, mostly in uh, England but also the Dutch had them the French had them uh, the Spanish to a certain degree so that's a lot of pikes and uh, rapier and musketry and we have only had one meeting so far um, but we're hoping to, when all of the coronavirus stuff uh, settles down and we hopefully will have vaccines, um, we're looking to do more with that. So there you go. Uh, Genevieve mentioned Scribal. Uh, I didn't have an image there of any Scribal projects, but here you can see an example of a very pretty scroll someone did. 
There you go. You can teach you how to do that when we get that up and running. Um, we'll probably still have virtual meetings coming up here soon um, where you could probably watch people or at least talk with people about what we do. All right, do we have any other guild leaders in the chat? I don't think so. Um, so we do have a lot of different guilds within the Barony. Um, we have a Bardic Guild, uh, we have a Brewing Guild, um, Clothiers, uh, we have Fiber Arts, Flame Workers. Uh, so if, if there is an Arts and Sciences Act based activity that you might wanna learn more about, if we don't already have a guild for it, feel free to, to, to contact someone about how we could start one because I guarantee you there are more people that are interested in those same things you are, and we can get a group of people together that all are really excited about whatever, ship making, and start working on something like that. Okay. Um, the last thing that we have to do within the SCA is service activities and volunteering. Um, we are a nonprofit organization when we hold events the people that run these events, that plan them, that make them happen, they're not being paid. Um, it's a lot of work, it's a, lab a labor of love, but it is truly a lot of fun. Um, I myself am a feastocrat. I've made several feasts for events. Uh, we have people in this chat that have run everything from small scale events of 20 people to events of, of hundreds of people. So there is always something for you to do with those events. And when we get later on, we're gonna talk about various types of volunteering in one of our later Newcomers Academy sessions. Um, but we need everything from people to do water bearing. Uh, just go out, here's a water bottle, make sure a fighter is drinking water and not gonna pass out because they're dehydrated. Uh, and as a fighter, that's really necessary. Um, <laughs> um, Genevieve does a lot of that. Uh, we have, people who just make sure that the classes that we have at these events are running smoothly and on time. Um, so there's always something to do. Uh, never, never feel like, oh, I'm here. I, you know, I, I don't have anything to do. I'm just going to sit in a corner. If you want to do something, if you don't know what to do, come ask one of us leaders of the Newcomers Academy. We will gladly help you get involved with something. Um, moving on, we have Kat. Uh, she's going to tell you all a little bit about the known world and a map of Fancyora. Kat? Possibly. I think she stepped away. Kat stepped away. Um, okay. We will uh, move on. We're going to move up. Actually, Genevieve, can you talk about their first event until Kat gets here? Uh, yes, I can. Um, so... Right now, we're kind of in this weird limbo of um, not knowing quite where we're going to have our next in-person event. Um, I saw that some people have been to events where this, or they've been to at least one event before this. Currently, right now, everything is virtual. Um, is virtual. Um, Currently on our Discord, do we have that link? Uh, we okay. have an unofficial Barony Discord that you can hop on um, during our normal PIP times, which are on Tuesdays from like 7.30 until people leave. Uh, we're currently hanging out on that Discord to at least chat with each other. Um, with, that's also what we use now for a lot of our guilds to at least, uh, you know, do stitch and bitches and et cetera. Uh, yes, thank you, Orazio, for a PIP is what is our term for populace in the park. Uh, usually in person, our populace in the park is we have our fighters do their practices. Uh, we have an uh, arts and sciences blanket where people bring projects or just hang out. It's a good way to get to know your fellow Barony members. Uh, coming up, it is still on Tuesday. Uh, we do tend to hang out in the Discord. If you don't know how to make Discord work, um, Kira is definitely a very good uh, source for that. Um, so currently coming up, that's also a virtual event, is we're going to have Coronation. Um, I'm pretty sure they're going to post it on the Kingdom of Ansteora Facebook page for the link to that. Um, there's also going to be two more virtual events. One of them has a Zoom uh, meeting posted on the actual calendar. 
but uh, and then spring in our steps on the 22nd, which I don't know how they're going to do that. They said it's going to be on their Facebook page. So currently right now, what you should be if you're looking for events, especially the virtual events, are be involved in our Facebook pages. Uh, most of you should already be on the Brinkwalad newcomers page. Uh, there's also the Barony of Brinkwalad Facebook page. Where we'll be posting links to a lot of these. And I know for a fact that Kira has been definitely very good about having the Facebook or the Facebook live streams for our um, for our virtual events that have been going on. And then the Kingdom of Monster you are a Facebook page is a really good source right now to get connected to our virtual events. Um, I'm not still not sure when our next. If one doesn't Facebook, um, some places on the OnStayora calendar page, so onstayora.org slash events, um, I will post that. Yes, thank you, Orazio, for posting that already. Um, some of them for the virtual events already have the Zoom link posted in there, but not all of them currently. Uh, right now, Facebook is basically what we use for our event sites. Um, because you see you have all the events listed um, on the uh, on CR calendar. Most of those have event pages where you can go and look at the schedule, go and look at where it is. Yeah, the actual Can't Stell in actually has. Okay, this is, a lot of these are canceled right now. So okay, pages. you can scroll up, please. Uh, yes. Uh, on North Keep Can't Stell in. Oh, okay. Um... Uh, they actually have the... Do they have the link all page? their stuff posted right there. Oh, there Not everybody has it. Most of them do use Facebook event sites and that should be your guide. This should be your first guide. And then the Facebook event page is going to be mostly guides of how to get to a site and the schedule and what's going to happen at the event. For your in-person event right now, I don't think we're going to be having any camping events anytime soon. We have what are called day tripping events where you just drive there, you know, hang out all day and then leave. Um, most of what you'll just need for just a day tripping event is garb. If you don't have garb, you can ask me or Razio. We have what we call gold key. It's loner garb to give out. Uh, usually have a chair. Not every place has a bunch of chairs to use. Um, usually feast gear, which will be like a mug, plate, fork, and spoon, um, and a basket to keep those in. A lot of those are very easy to obtain at any sort of thrift store. Um, usually we're not looking at did you have a handmade mug <laughs> to drink out of? We're looking more for the aesthetic or what we call the 10 foot rule. Does it look nice from about 10 feet away? Um, after that, basically the only things that you really have to do is when you get to an event is what we call troll in or go to gate. If you don't know where that is, you can always ask somebody and the people at gate will help you go through the whole process. It is basically, we want to know who's on site, there's a waiver to sign, and basically pay the site fee because most of the time we're a nonprofit, so we do have to have a little bit of help paying for the event itself. Um, that's basically all you really need to know for your first events. Right now we're in this weird limbo <laughs> for something that's never happened before, <laughs> and we are trying to all work through it. Um, so right now, your main source is probably going to be Facebook or the Discord. Thanks. All right, Kat, you are up next. Uh, talk a little bit about the known world for us. Absolutely. Sorry, I had to step away. Okay, so... So SC 101, we're, we're have, this is a very broad course, giving you the details on a very high level, uh, on a very high level. <laughs> um, and you've probably already noticed if you are brand new to the SCA or even if you're just on the periphery, you hear us use a lot of jargon. And um, one of the most basic jargon that we, we use is when we talk about the known world. So obviously the known world is the SCA as a total uh, throughout the entire, uh, not just the United States, but throughout the world. Our kingdoms do cover six continents, 
I don't know. I don't know if Antarctica is uh, claimed or not. <laughs> it might be claimed. Uh, nobody's there. Nobody's there. Primaris currently has it claimed. Who, I'm sorry, who does? Primaris. Oh, oh well. <laughs> I mean, they can have Antarctica. We have space. Exactly. That's true. That's true. And Steora, by the way, is, was claimed, uh, did claim space. Ask somebody about that story sometime. Um, so, so the known world, when, and, and so that just encompasses the entire society as a whole throughout, throughout the world. Um, there are kingdoms in Europe. Europe is one kingdom called Drakenwald. Uh, we also, I need to hide that so I can see. Lokak is Australia. There's also kingdoms in Japan, in Thailand, uh, Indonesia. Um, so what makes up the known world? The known world is broken up into kingdoms. And I know people have uh, already mentioned all these kingdoms. Like I keep Drakenwald, King of Drakenwald, and Stiora. And Stiora is the one that we are in. And it encompasses Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, our nearest neighbors to the north are Calentier. To the west is the Outlands. And to the east is Glen Aubin. And our uh, rivals, you could say, is Trimeris down in Florida. Not sure how that came about because they're a little bit far away, but I'm sure there's a story there. Um, okay. So a kingdom is, it is, it's a geographical territory. However, it's overseen by a king and queen. Oh, that's a lovely map. I haven't actually seen one yet. That's great. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> so uh, each kingdom is, is run by by the two pillars, if you, if you remember what uh, Robert was saying, there's the business side and then there's the feudal side. So the feudal side is the king and queen, and then the business side is the kingdom seneschal. To become king and queen, you, in Anstiora, you win it right by arms to become a king or queen, um, which means that there is a crown tournament and, sorry, I'm also admitting people. Um, and it is, it is a, a, a heavy chivalric tournament that uh, the last man standing pretty much becomes the, the next prince and then his consort or she, he, because we have had a female crown win by, by her right, it was the first. I think there's now been at least another one, if not a couple others. Uh, anyway, so. So their consort would, would become their, their partner as king and queen, and, and then they rule for six months. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I need to write better notes. Okay, so the other uh, step down from kingdom is the barony. Again, Robert touched on the barony, but the baronies are usually focused in either large territories or large population centers. So we have the Barony of Bringola, which is Austin. You have the Barony of Bjornsburg, which is down in San Antonio. Uh, we've got the Barony of Elfsea, which is Fort Worth, hopefully. Uh, Steps is, is Dallas. Uh, but then you also have like the Barony of Bonwick, which encompasses most of West Texas, like everywhere. <laughs> so, so. Uh, does anything west just consider that uh, the barony of Bonwick? Uh, the baronies are again, they have both pillars. They have their seneschal, which is the business side, and then they also have their feudal representation, which is the baron and baroness. And the baron and baroness are appointed, I guess that might be the right word, um, by the king and queen to represent their interests there. Um, and I think maybe if I saw come on, we might actually have the B&B on, but we'll, uh, if that's the case, we'll introduce them here in, in a little bit. Um, our current Baron and Baroness are Wintilia Baroness Wintiliana and Baron Gavin. They've been Baron and Baroness for, I think, three-ish years at this point. Um, so the Baron and Baroness, they're the ones who will preside over courts. Um, they're kind of the pomp and circumstances. They um, will, uh, yeah, so they, they have the champions. Anyways. Okay, so smaller than a barony, the next size down is, well, the, the, another, 
larger structure is called a province. A province is again kind of a large, larger territory. However, they do not have a they do not have the baron and baroness. They only have the business structure side. So they only have the seneschal. They only have the officers. We do have a province uh, in the Kingdom of Anstior. It's the province of Moonshadow up in Oklahoma. Very very active. Um, so when we get into smaller groups, we will talk about shires. Uh, shires are a smaller independent group that is led by officers and they have no land and nobility. So they're kind of independent. They are not overseen by a presiding barony. Uh, they just kind of stand on their own and, and do what they can. They're, they're usually might be more remote. Uh, the Shire of Rosenfeld, I believe, is in Tyler, Texas. Um, there's the Shire, uh, Sea Winds, I believe, is the Shire. That's down in Corpus Christi. So they're, they're, they're not in, they're in bigger population centers, but, but the groups are rather small. So it's easier to maintain a smaller size group. Uh, you also have a canton or a riding. Uh, we, Let's see, a canton is semi-independent. However, they are presided over by a barony. So they're kind of like a small group within a barony. Uh, so they still um, have the baron and baroness that come out to their events and help support them, uh, give them the awards, but they also then have their own set of officers. Um, a canton of a Dragon's Fire Tour is in Stephenville, Texas. It's a very active canton. They are overseen by the barony of Elsie. So here in Bringwalad, the last branch or group I'm going to talk about is a stronghold. They do have what they call institutional branches, and these kind of can ebb and flow because it's usually made up of a very fluctuating uh, population. So the Bringwalad has the stronghold of Hell's Gate which is centered around the Colleen area and the Port Hood area. So because there's a lot of military personnel that come and they go, the population of Hell's Gate kind of ebbs and, ebbs and flows. Um, I believe that's where Genevieve started and that's why uh, she is Genevieve of uh, Hell's Gate. <laughs> so, so you'll hear us talk about Hell's Gate a lot. So, okay, I think that's, that's all I have. I hope. All right, thank you, Kat. Um, yes, I did see our, our Baron and Baroness silently enter the, the Zoom call. Uh, and we did say we'd come back to them if they silently entered the Zoom call. So, um, Gavin and Wintiliana, if y'all wouldn't mind, uh, would your excellencies please say a few words and introduce yourselves? Hi, um, so yeah, of course, Baroness Wintiliana. Baron Gavin. Um, oh my goodness. First of all, welcome to all the newcomers. We really are excited to have you. Um, <laughs> and also thank you to the Newcomers Academy Committee members that have put all this together. Um, we've really appreciate it. And I know it's very strange and not being together and seeing each other in person and having to change everything over to the virtual gatherings. But we're hoping, one, we hope, we, of course, we can see each other in person in the future soon, and everyone is there, and we also hope that, you know, we can still continue to function and welcome new people and get information out and, and continue on even through these, these pl virtual platforms. Um, we're available. If you ever have any questions, come see us, even if it's just a question of, oh, I'm interested in this thing. Who should I talk to? Or where can I get involved? We, we will be happy to introduce you to people, direct you to whoever, which officer or, you know, which, which guild to direct you to or anyone that could help you. I don't know um, if they've actually discussed entourage. Um, <laughs> basically, we have people who keep us in line, make sure we're at places we need to be. But also it's a good point for if we're sitting in, uh, in at um, a tournament or something, we can usually kind of discuss with our entourage of what's going on. So it's a really good way for new people to get a front row, yeah. front row, <laughs> front row seat of how an event is run, a good way up for also to meet people because you'll be following us around talking to everybody. Um, it, I've had more fun in the essay entouraging than uh, even a lot of the other activities that I've been involved in just because of the personal interaction you get with other members of the populace. Um, I don't know what else we have. Yeah. But and really, yeah. any questions, come see us. Welcome, welcome yes. all. 
we we look so we look so for so look forward to meeting you in person in the future. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. All right. Um, so to to move back on here, um, finding your place in the SCA. Um, so we've already discussed there are a lot of things to do, and this organization can be very overwhelming to try and get started in. I mean, how, how do you pick? It all sounds so fun, right? Do I want to stab someone with a metal sword, whack someone with a big stick covered in rubber and duct tape? I want to ride a horse and look epic with a lance. Do I want to like get into the nitty gritty of some arts and sciences project and shear a sheep and make fabric from the wool and sew an entire dress out of it? What do I want to do? Um, so that's what we, the Newcomers Academy, are here to help you with. Um, so don't feel like you have to do everything at once when you first join. That's the, the best piece of advice I can give you. Go to your first event, dip your toe in a couple of things, go watch some fighting, go watch a little equestrian, see the bardic competition. Um, but don't try to go into a rapier tournament and a heavy tournament and an arts and sciences tournament all in your first year. That's probably, it's probably a lot. Um, so come talk to us um, or the Baron and Baroness, any of us here, are great resources. And we will help you figure out not only what are the different things that might match up with your interests, but how you can approach them and not just look at the vast sea of things to do. Um, I know myself getting involved in arts and sciences projects. I mean, that that's huge, right? Saying arts and sciences of pre-1600s is just kind of mind-blowingly large in the term of the number of things you could be doing. Um, and even when I talk about a small subset of things like scribal, especially as one who is not artistically inclined in re with regard to drawing and painting, um, uh, my mind extends to stick figures. Um, I, I wanted to get into it and I was like, man, I couldn't make something that pretty. Well, it turns out I actually can make pretty things. I'm pretty good at coloring in the lines. I was always great at that as a child. And so with Scribal, even if you don't know how to make the beautiful illuminations, you can make charters for people. We have pre-made charters that you can get take home paints called gauche and you can start painting on them until you've, you've made it look beautiful and correct and you didn't have to know how to draw a crane. Um, or you don't have to have good handwriting because it's already written. Um, with rapier fighting, you know, we'll, we'll start you off easy. We're not going to put you up against our best fighter and say, oh, here you go. you Have at it. We're going to teach you how to fight. Uh, if you come out to a rapier practice, we have loner armor that we can put you in or, in, or a heavy practice. We have loner gear. Um, and you don't have to pay anything to get involved in that at first. So you can find out if it's something that you even want to do. Maybe you don't like getting hit with a stick, so heavy is not your sport. Or maybe, you know, you don't have a good sense of depth perception, so you, you have trouble stabbing people. And maybe your thing is archery. Maybe you just want to be really far away and just, you know, shoot it and walk off. Um, <laughs> their excellencies are nodding, I can see. <laughs> um, they're excellent archers. Um, so I really encourage you to try out a lot of different things. Um, see what things start you start to connect with and communicate with us, the Newcomers Academy, so that we can help you find the best way for you to get involved. Um, there's another thing you're going to hear about, especially when you talk about getting involved in the SCA. And a lot of people talk about it, and it's this really vague concept that we talk about called the dream. Um, and the thing is, the dream can vary a lot from person to person. Uh, it depends on who you are and what your dream is of being in the SCA. Do you want to be a noble knight or a, a Renaissance painter or a merchant? Like, how does that resonate with you? And it'll change uh, for each of us. Um, but I do encourage people, uh, especially when they're getting involved, when they hear people talking about that, ask those people, what does the dream mean to you? What is your dream? Um, and you're going to get a lot of different answers, and some of those answers might not end for an hour. So be prepared when you ask that question, because if you ask someone in the SCA about something they're interested in, they will not shut up about it. Uh, please, if you ask me about dance, you know, set aside an hour and a half to two hours, because I'm going to talk your ear off about it. Um, 
there, there's just so much to do and so many ex exciting things to get involved in. And there's so many talented people within our organization. And we just want the opportunity to introduce you to as many of them as possible and to help you find uh, your place within our organization. Um, so moving on, uh, Nadia uh, has been kind of watching chat. Um, we have some resources here that I'm putting up. Uh, I'm going to be posting this slideshow for all of you to, to see, and I'll share it with you in the Zoom chat and again on the Baronial page. And you'll then have access to all these links if you want them, if you don't want to have to write them down. Uh, but Nadia, if you wouldn't mind uh, addressing some questions or things that were talked about in the chat. Yeah, we had a good question about um, age limits for participating. So the SCA really tries hard to be family friendly activity. Um, so we've got lots of folks who come with their kids, with their teens if they're interested um all the way through there's there's people who've raised their babies in the sca and then their kids leave they lose interest for a little while and then they come back you know a decade later and everybody knows who they are and, and is welcomed back so um it's a really it's a really nice thing to be able to do together um and we also had a discussion about let's see about youth combat and there is an SCA, society-wide, um, 